OAuth authentication with BCCL. Hey, I'm Eric, and very soon the only way we can authenticate to Business Central is using OAuth. Basic authentication goes away, at least for Business Central in the cloud. Um, and up until now, BCCL has only supported basic authentication because Hey, it was the easiest way to go. Um, but now in the newest version of BCCL, we have support for OAuth. Actually two different flavors of OAuth. Um, and um, let me show you how that works. So since this is a BCCL video, we are starting straight into the, uh, into the command prompt. For those who might look at this and say, hey, what is BCCL? Well, it's BC command line and it's a tool that enables you to export data out of bc uh, import data into bc from xml from json from excel uh, from csv files and do all sorts of crazy cool things from the command prompt uh, it's a tool that's designed to be incorporated into um, into scripts and automation and stuff like that and it's can handle any data size and it's very, very fast. Um, anyway, it's it's a command line thing. You hit BCCL and we get a million parameters uh, that you use to control what it, it will do. And normally those three, the, the URL, the username and password, that's how you do basic authentication. And BCCL still supports basic authentication if you're using against working against Dockers or on-prem or older versions and all that good stuff. Um, but now we got a new parameter here, auth. And um, let's actually show how the first way of doing this with, with OAuth works. So I'll say dash dash auth and tell that I'm using OAuth. And this is the only thing. So now I guess something that if you have ever used uh, Visual Studio Code, you will recognize to sign in, use a web browser to open this page and enter this code. So I will just copy this one and go to web browser here and paste in the code. And I am myself, you're signing into BCCL, is that what you want to do? Sure. And you have signed in. And if we go back to the command prompt, access to Business Central authorized. But to be honest, we haven't really logged into Business Central yet. We have gained a access token that will give us access if we talk to the right Business Central, the Business Central that the token will open up for, then we have access. And um, so the way that actually works is um, that now we can we can tell. I'm just gonna locate the thing here. We can we can go to BCCL and say, okay, let's connect to a web service. Um, and the web service we get the URL from the, from the web service. The the BCCL. URL, it looks like this in this case, I'm just connecting to my tenant. And what I'm actually gonna do now is that I'm gonna use the, the dash dash remember function. So what I have, what I'm doing now is that I'm telling, hey, BCCL, please just remember this parameter because then I don't have to type it on every call. So, so since I am connected, I can now try to ask BCCL for something so I can, do dash t for task and ask what hey bccl what can you do so we're now we're asking the the app based component inside business central the, the 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 other part of bccl what can you do and um we got a list back of what it can do we can see that it can it can delete all if you need that it can delete data if you supply a data file to with stuff you want to delete, you can get data. You can uh, you can get a mapping file from a table. You can do a mass update. You can post purchase documents. You can post sales documents. You can upload data. You can run a code unit. You can get a list of tables, or you can get task, which is the one we just did. So we we can since we're already connected, we could say get data, and then we'll do a settings table equal 18 
And since we haven't specified anything else, the output will just go to the console uh, and it will be in JSON format. So here are all our customers in JSON format. Uh, if I wanted to do format and say, give me them in, in CSV, I will, I'll get the data in CSV. And if I had a file, I could upload the same way. So, so that is now, since I am authenticated with OAuth, uh, that authentication runs until this token dies, which means within an hour, or if you do BCCL dash dash forget. So now if, if we try to ask tasks again, we will get uh, that it cannot continue because it doesn't know anything, but now it, it forgot everything it knew. Okay, so let's try the other way around. Um, and the other way around is to use what is known as site-to-site -site or service-to-service -service or OAuth. And what you need to do first is actually we need to go to the browser here and go into our Azure portal and create a app registration. And already did, did that. You can see here I got an app registration here. Uh, the application or client ID is B A D D A B six D D. Um, so I created one, and I added a API permission, saying that there's a application access to API read write, and I granted admin consent for uh, for for this uh, registration, and then I went in and added a client secret. And you can see it start out, but I know what it is. And so think about this as you create a user and, and the user you create is the app registration. Uh, so if I go into my, my business central now, then after I create the app registration, you need to go in and tell that this is actually a user. So if I go to inside business and come on BZ, I go to Azure Active Directory Applications. You can see that I have created this BADD, a B, B I don't wanna say this is bad, but it's actually B6DD. So I have added this application as an application in here and given it uh, permissions. Um, so that is pretty good. So think about that as this is actually the user ID and the secret we create here is the password. The, the good thing about this is that it's no longer a interactive uh, process of logging in. It's actually a something that is just stored. So you can, you can kind of think of it as the same as a username password. It's just different. Um, so the way that works is that we do BCCL and we use the auth command again, do site to site. And then we do client ID and I'll grab the, uh, the client ID that we just had from Azure. This, I'll grab the client secret that started with RUW, something like that. This is the guy. I put it in quotes because it might contain characters that would throw off uh, the command line. And then, and this is the difference between the OAuth, we, the first one we did, and this one is that now we need to tell the tenant ID. We need to tell who is the tenant because otherwise it won't work. So we will do that. There we go. And we authenticated. Let's and now we need to do. Let's go back and grab the uh, this guy. So we'll grab the URL and remember that one. So we have remembered the URL, and we can ask what task do you have. And we got task. We can go back and and what did we do before? We ask about customers as a CSV file. We get our customers as a CSV file, and now in this case we're. We're site to site or service to service authenticated uh, with BCCL. And when we're done with that, we do forget frog, <laughs> forget. There we go. So that's 
OAuth authentication with uh, with BCCL. If you haven't checked out BCCL, go to hogart.com. I think there's a link below. Uh, and check out BCCL. It's actually pretty cool. And uh, in eFocus, we have used it a lot. We uh, created a a uh, QuickBooks transformation tool, a Sage transformation tool that actually takes a complete QuickBooks database and complete Sage database and transfer them into BC uh, using BCCL. And um, you can do lots of interesting stuff with this tool. So check it out. And thanks for watching.